What radio, the music you want. With your host, Dean Dan. Once again, I find myself at the mercy of someone I wouldn't let pick my nose. Radio what? Dot com. What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. And maybe you could have me. At your next event, you know I like to party with the people. I'm very honored and privileged to be with people at their best times in their lives, celebrating their weddings and birthday parties and anniversaries, you know, even the corporate events. You know, when the boss gives you a little, hey, you know what? You did a good job. Let's have a party with Keys Dan. Yeah. Today on the program, speaking of people that like to party, create entertainment, I have the Twism White Piece. Yeah, he's a rapper. He's a hip hopper. And you're going to get to know a little bit more about him in your ears in the next few minutes. This week's shows, <gasps> da, 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 da. I have no shows. Due to the novel COVID-19 coronavirus, all the shows have been canceled. There will be no party on Thursday. There will be no party on Friday. There will be no party on Saturday. But there will be lots of podcasts, so stay tuned for that. All right. <laughs> Without getting too much of a downer, let's get into it with Twism White Peace. Calling Twism White Peace now. Hello. Hi, Twism White, please, please. Yeah, speaking. Oh, my goodness. It's Keys Dan with the What Makes You Famous podcast. Man, I've been excited to talk to you for quite some time. How are you doing, man? I'm blessed, brother. How are you today? Oh, super duper, man. Twism White Peace. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Yeah, but for all points and purposes, man, you can call me TWP. (laughs) TWP. I like that, man. I like that a lot. We'll give the people a little idea of who... TWP, the Twism White Piece is? Uh, shoot. Um, okay. Um, a multi award winning hip hop entertainer that is a father and a husband and a CEO of a radio station. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, man. I'm guessing that radio station is Diamond Edge Hip Hop Network? No, that is the uh, Facebook page. The radio station is FCR 247. Okay. All right. Well, I, yeah, I see that. Yeah, the thing is. Yeah, the the URL after Facebook.com is FCR247. It makes a lot of sense, man. So uh, tell the people, I mean, uh, looking through your YouTube and looking through all your various social medias, and you are way out there. You've got uh, content after content. I can see you've been going hard at it for at least six years, man. Tell me a, a little bit more about how you started. And how you became who you are, man. Um, really just kind of a long progress of leading into today's world. I mean, I wasn't always there. It kind of just lack of options and a really talented vocabulary, I guess, would be the <laughs> best way to say it. But honestly, in all truth, man, I always wanted to be a hip hop artist. I just didn't choose the life path towards it. I always chose something else. And then, when all said and done and the dust settled, I was finally able to uh, pursue it. So <laughs> it's nice to it's nice to be able to pursue it now, right? Well, it sounds like what you did was uh, you you got a fallback. You you got a a, a Joe job, uh, something to make maybe the parents happy or maybe the wife happy or or something uh, to something no, to fall back no, on. Quite the opposite. No, quite no. the opposite. Okay, man. I was I was he- heavily involved into like gangs and heavily involved into ah. like uh, prisons and and. And a lot of a lot of bad negative stuff. <laughs> well, out of that pain comes uh, creativity. I fully believe that, man. And and yeah, listening that, to your you raps, listen to you, yeah, uh, listening to you rap way. all day long was just it, it's very timely. From six years ago uh, up till right now, you say what's yeah. on your mind, and you're not afraid to to call people out. I mean, uh, a, a little known person named uh, Tupac used to do that as well. 
Are, are do you have yeah. fear of repercussion? No, not whatsoever, man. I mean, I don't. I don't believe that there is such thing as a, a repercussion. I mean, you can't. You can't hurt somebody that's already telling the truth. You can't hurt somebody that's already been to the bottom. You can't. You know what I mean? Like there are some people out here just kind of unfazable and that's the people who are bringing you like the realness because they're done with all the silly stuff and they just put it out there like it is. Right. So, so when did you find that you had this skill uh, for rapping? Uh, was it something that you were able to do in the school ground and, and on the playground and, and, uh, get people to listen to you, uh, while you, uh, kind of, uh, ra- rattled things off or was this something that be you honest, were writing. Be, be honest with you, it, it did start in school, but it wasn't really respected like that. Like it wasn't like, you know, everybody's like, Oh, you know, we used to sit in the in the playground. No, they really kinda looked at me like I was outside my realm and like they didn't talk to me and I was an outcast. So I mean, it wasn't until I started mixing other circles other than than, you know, those that my parents or grandparents wanted me to hang out with you know what i mean it wasn't until i started mixing circles that i started finding people who absorbed and and reciprocated the respect of what i was able to do and the talent that i had uh well since you mentioned the parents and grandparents let's take it back uh it looks like uh, well looking at your facebook page and you know doing the the little bit of research that i i have done uh, as you're from yeah. a small town called page arizona tell me about page yep. arizona and growing up as oh, a small beautiful. TWP. It's beautiful. I, I actually was born there. I didn't live very long there. I was born there. Um, my mom met my dad and it was kind of like one of those brief, you know, uh, not long lasting kind of affair marriage just type thing. And uh, in the mix of that, I was created. And then from there, they each chose their own separate path. My dad committed murder. My mom ended up just being kind of a junkie and like, you know, just kind of like one of those people that bounce from town to town, you know what I mean? So, um, she kind of did her own thing. He was locked down. I stayed with my grandparents in Lafayette, Indiana for the longest time. That's actually who I consider to be my parents just because, you know, they were the ones that put in all that time and effort and everything. But I was only with them for like two and a half years before I was put into the system. So, I mean, it was kind of like more system life, more boys homes and lockdown than it was parenting. Like the only real parents I had was like two and a half years in Lafayette. And that was my grandparents. And other than that, it was not very, there was no parenting. <laughs> Yikes. Well, it sounds like, I mean, yeah. at least you have some kind of memory of, of your kin folk, uh, from, from somewhat, but, uh, it sounds like you, you got uh, bounced around a lot as a young TWP and you went from Lafayette. Yeah. Was it mostly in, in, in Louisiana? No, Lafayette, Indiana, Indiana. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Small little town outside of uh, a small little town outside of Indianapolis. So gotcha. I, I think I spent like my first year there. I, I don't remember being there, but, but I, I have pictures of, of me and my cousins in Indiana. So, uh, yeah, oh, I, nice. I, you know, I, 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 I feel your pain. Uh, mom and dad, uh, mom and biological didn't stick together too long. And I saw him every once in a while. He wasn't quite, quite the junkie. I mean, you know, if you listen to my mom's podcast that she did with me, she'll tell you about all the, all the, uh, the various substances she went through, but that's a whole nother story. I mean, so, uh, you know, you, so you dealt with that. Did you at least get a, get to develop some kind of relationship with your mom or your dad or anything at all like that? Um, mom not so much uh that's 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 just blown out of the water there's no hope for that relationship um it was very strained to begin with for the years that that it was a relationship it was very very strained Mm -hmm. um and then she just kind of made even more mistakes and even worse mistakes after that now she's back in prison again so i mean it's it's one of those things where just the relationship on that end just kind of fell out um my father it we didn't even get to meet each other or talk to each other. Like I've never met him, but mm. I've spoken with him because he got out. Uh, he did a 25 to life sentence and he got out, um, back in 2010, I think it was 2009, 2010. No, it was even later than that. I think, I don't know. It was probably 2010, I think. But, uh, when he got out, I had already moved to a different country. So I kind of didn't even, it was, it, it's just, you know, another strained relationship, right? You know, it, it, it's in progress, though. That one's at least in progress. 
Yeah, and I guess you know where your mom's at. You know, <laughs> she, yeah. she she's in yeah. place. <laughs> so, so yeah. and, and the grandparents are they still around or? Uh, my grandma is still alive. She's off bopping around the world, you know, and her, 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 uh, well-earned, um, you know, freedom and, and peace of mind. Hey, get uh, it, girl. My grandfather rest his soul. He is, he is already gone and passed away. So, oh. um, but so, you know, he lived a about, great life as well. Well, tell me about growing up in boys town, boys life, boy, you know, getting, uh, was it, was it at least did you come up with any brothers and sisters that you can, people that you can call friends still maybe, or. Or was it just total? I mean, total during the boys' home era, no, no, there's, there's just really nobody there from that. You know that 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 that's all different, different life, different you know mentality, different aspect of of people that I, you know, don't even really much associate with anymore, right? You know, it's just different mentalities. But um, it really was more of just a, a bouncing around. Like I was in seven different you know institutions and boys' homes in the state of Indiana within two years. So I mean, like. I got passed from one to the next to the next thing, you know, partly my fault just because I wanted to act reckless and wild because I was reacting to not having any parents. Cause they took, basically the judge said that my grandparents weren't physically cause they were both disabled. So they weren't physically able to take care of me. Mm. And so that's why they ended. That's why they forced the terminacy of, of guardianship after two years. And then they put me in a boy's home. And I was like, you know what? That's, that's jacked up, man. Why you be putting me on a voice home like that for, you know, just because I had no family. So then they, it was just one thing after another after that. And then I kind of just went on my own little, you know, my own little spiral. And that lasted for probably like, I don't know, 15 years. <laughs> I mean, TWP, so. I, I could see somebody lashing out to, to with that kind of a, of, of, a of, of an upbringing. You know, you really, you, you didn't have anybody to latch on to. <laughs> you know, you're supposed oh, man, to have that, that is that's yeah. well said. But at the same time, I mean, you know, I kind of don't I don't I don't like to put crutches on things. So, I mean, you know, there, there's no excuses for how I acted or what I did. But, oh, yeah, most definitely. There was no connecting with anybody that 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 was that's a guarantee. <laughs> well, I mean, somewhere you had to have some kind of school life because you came up with this amazing vocabulary. I, I got to call you that a lyricist, is, man. I, I read a lot. of Man, I read a lot of books. And then when I say I read a lot of books, I mean, I read a lot of books. See, when you're locked down, man, the one thing that they always seem to have at a boys' home or they always seem to have at an institution is a library. Yeah. And one thing that those kids don't want to do is they don't want to read. So there's, like, tons of books to choose from. And, like, I don't know, I just kind of picked up one one day and then never stopped reading after that. And, I mean, I was reading stuff that was, like, huge. Like, back then it was you know, monstrous. We're talking Lord of the Rings when it was a book, you know, we're talking the Hobbit when it was a book, (laughs) you know, we're talking, you know, all seven volumes of C.S. Lewis's, you know, uh, uh, with Chronicles of Narnia, you know what I mean? So, I mean, there's, you know, there's some, some weight in the vocabulary that was added just because of, of reading and boredom. But I also did go, I, I, I did a little bit of college and stuff. And of course, you know, you learn stuff along the way there too you know no but it sounds like reading these amazing books by these amazing authors there's a reason that they've stand that they're stood the taste the test of time uh, they're well written yeah exactly <laughs> you know and if exactly. you're learning from uh, from these authors it, it's a good education in itself and i'm glad yeah. you, you, <laughs> you you had the wherewithal to go to college i mean what what did uh, twp want to be when he grew up you know if, if uh, i mean you know i've always wanted to be the hip-hop artist Right. Like that is, that's all I've ever wanted to be. All I've ever wanted to be was the rapper. Oh, that's as long as I can remember. Okay. I, I mean, I don't even know how long it's been. It's just <laughs> the earliest memory I can think of. I've always wanted to be a rapper. However, though, like I said, in the mix of my life and the way it went, mm-hmm. choices were made and decisions were made that, that altered my path of life. And one of those was, you know, having a bunch of kids and desperately trying to figure out ways to provide for them, feed for them. And one of them was getting paid to go back to college. So, that Fantastic. Was, uh, so what was the course was, of study? Uh, <laughs> yeah. What was the course of study? What did you end up studying? In? Uh, basically like small electronics, man. Like I can take apart like anything like PS4, Xbox, things like that. Computers. I can take them apart and put them back together. But like not at the level that like, you know, makes me worthy enough to be my own business or, or <laughs> go get a job. You know, it just looks like kind of my small hobby type thing you know what i mean hey that's a good skill to have man if anything else you can go work at the 
big box store, or, you know, Best Buy, be a geek or something. But uh, I you, wish, you know. I wish. <laughs> Nowadays, then they're smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully, you came up with another skill, man. You had this yeah. to fall back on. I mean, there's a lot of artists out there that are starving. Uh, you know that 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 can't make it. They want to be rappers, but they don't put the work in. And you put the work in, yeah. man. You, you you wrote these lyrics, and like I said, your YouTube is ridiculously full of content. Just uh, you know, song after song after song. You got so many lyrics in your back pocket, man. That was it. Poems that you were writing in school. Who? What was the teacher? What was the the adult that said, "Hey, you're pretty good at writing, or you're good at at." talking or speaking i mean there was somebody guiding you or was was this all no. divine intervention yeah no there's I, you know what i'm gonna be honest with you there was nobody guiding me like there was no there, there's never been anybody in my corner prepping me the whole time like you can do this you got this you're gonna be a rapper like every single person along the way has been like dude what are you doing with your life why are you wasting your life on rap you know what i mean like it, it i've totally never been respected for it like I'm just now absorbing some respect and it's only because of that work, right? Like, because this rap game is so polluted with a lot of, a lot of the same typical substance that people don't, people don't believe that there can be something out there different. And it took me, you know, it took me 15 albums. It took me, you know, like seven EPs. It took me like 12 singles. And that's not even including all the 16 mixtapes that I made before digital platforms ever came out that are actually on CD that I have sitting here right here in front of me. You know what I mean? Like there's, I've been doing this for like 17 years. I've been trying to rap and be a rapper. And of that 17 years, I would say, nine to 10 of that has been on a professional level. And of that nine to 10, six of that, roughly six, seven of that has been on what we call the actual indie platform and not just, you know, not a hobby or, or, you know, just somebody throwing out stuff, you know, like actually doing it the right way, actually putting in the effort, paying for certain things that you got to pay for. You know what I mean? Like the real stuff, you know, I, I absolutely, and, and now, yeah, yeah. And, it's it's hard, bro. <laughs> no, I absolutely I know what you doctor. mean. And it sounds like you you have an idea of where the turning points in your life were were the you know, where you made those turns. Seventeen years ago, you said, Look, I'm gonna start writing some of this stuff down that's in my head and start putting it out there. You you had the the wherewithal to to put I've used wherewithal twice on in this podcast. I never say <laughs> hey, don't that. Don't worry. I <laughs> If people need to learn that word. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you've had the, the idea to put stuff down and on a mixtape. So what did you do with these mixtapes? Were you giving them out to your friends and, or playing them, you know, in the parking lots or, or going to I the mean, local hangouts? Much, yeah, I mean, I, 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 my very first mixtape was, uh, it was uh, a really cool collection of like four or five songs that I have one friend um, from that time era who I'm actually still friends with who remembers um, and might even still have it. I don't know. Um, but I do know that they still remember um, that little mixtape that I put out. And like that, you know, w when you do something like that and you have, you know, um, absorbing friends, you know, even if they're not promoting you, even if they're not out there saying, you know, yeah, man, go do it, go jump for your dreams. Even just to listen to it and be like, dude, that was actually all right. You know what I mean? That, okay, cool. Well, let me try again. Let me do something better. You know what I mean? So it just kind of progresses from there. You know what I mean? So. No, that's what an artist wants to be uh, recognized, to, to be appreciated yeah. for whatever you put out there. 17 years ago, Jeez. you made something out of nothing. You put it out to the world and you had this one friend that at least, you, you know, you, you have a long lasting relationship with them and bam, you know, that's the one that kept you going. You could still remember it. You know, you could still remember that first that first uh, offering you made to the world. And since then you've done so much, man, you know, it just keeps going. Well, so I mean, yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say, you kind of get to the point where, you know, you get it, you get yourself built into a rhythm or a pattern or a, or a quest. In my effort is a quest, you know, every album I made, every mixtape I made, every CD I made, every show that I did, cause I've done 164 shows. Too, yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah. So, I mean, when, when you add all this together, you're like, dude, you must have been always busy. You must have been always. Well, that's actually what 
stop me from doing the drugs. That's what actually got me out of the gang life. That's what stopped me from going to prison and jail and, and lockdown and all these other places. And that's what stopped me from being the wicked, bad person that I was in an effort to become, you know, capable and worthy enough to be able to, to hold this mantle of, you know, a rapper. I mean, to be taken <laughs> seriously, I guess I felt like I had to take myself seriously. And the only way to do that was to change, you know, change the things. And by this repetition, this pattern of creating albums, creating mixtapes, it, it kind of affected this necessary change inside of me in which, you know, I kind of got addicted to, I, you know, I always, I just kept wanting to give, become better, just become better. That's all I kept, kept trying to do. Just become better. Stop the drugs, stop the cigarettes, started exercising. I mean, the whole nine yards, it was all kind of entitled into this, you know, repetition of albums. Hey, TWP, you've already alluded that you're, you have an addictive personality. Well, you know, you were addicted to drugs before, uh, you know, you've addicted to cigarettes and you've turned that addiction into performing. Yeah, I have an addictive personality. I think a lot of people do. And if you could turn it, turn yeah. it into something good, such as exercising, uh, putting effort into your, into your work, whatever that might be, be the best at what you want to be, you know, be the best plumber, be the best lawyer, be the best doctor, be the best rapper, do it, you know, yeah. go out there. And, and that's what you're doing. You're putting all your effort in there. You're addicted to writing lyrics and rapping. So, I mean, that who helped you uh, put together that first mix mixtape? Was that all you in the bedroom? Or oh, that's did all you, me. All oh, yeah. you. I Just, mean, I, and see, this is the thing. Like, this is the thing. I hear a lot of people like, oh, I can't get this done. I can't get that done. I can't do this. I can't do that. <laughs> and like the world now, the world now is so much easier. It's so built for you to be able to one click anything you need, right? Anything you need done, just one click it. Back then, man, oh, we had to really kind of, we had to, I, 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 I had the pleasure, uh, and I'll say it like that, I had the pleasure of being around before digital platforms, mm. okay? I had the pleasure of being an artist before digital platforms, I mean, maybe not invented, but definitely before they became something serious and before they became even known, okay? And I'm going to tell you, like, there's so much work and so much effort, like, my kids, you can ask my kids, man. They all they <laughs> their childhood. They remember. Oh, all Dad did was sit in front of a computer all day long and work on his music because that's how long it took me. It took me hours upon hours upon hours. Like I can get my work done now in ten, fifteen, twenty minutes. I can write a song in twenty minutes. I can record it in twenty minutes. I mean, everything is like fifteen, twenty to me, right? Back then, it was fifteen, twenty hours, you know. And and so I just don't understand that concept today of you know, oh, I can't get it done. TWP, you're hitting the nail on that head, man. Uh, these kids today, <laughs> oh, you just got older in one second. But, uh, you know, I, I was listening to another podcast where they were trying to to make videos when they were kids. And and how do you distribute these videos? You you had to have two different, if you wanted to edit a video down, maybe you took, maybe it was a skateboard video and you took a bunch yeah. of, of video uh, 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 on a video cassette of skateboarders and how do you edit that down into something that's consumable you had to have another tape player and play a little yeah. bit and record play a little bit yeah. record you know yeah. and and then well, how thankfully, did you distribute thankfully it? i had dvds i had dvds and cds right? even so, so I mean, I, if you did yeah <laughs> if you didn't have youtube or any other platform that was playing the videos you had to distribute right. these things by hand and hopefully right. the people that you distributed them to would put them in their home dvd player Instead of putting that uh, that new edition of Batman or or uh, you know whatever show they, they else they had to watch, you know, hey, let me take some time out and listen to TWP, the Twism White Peas. <laughs> you were hopeful. You know, so proud. You know, I was so proud of those moments, though. You know, creating those albums, creating those DVDs. I have this. I have this booklet, and I have these CD cases. Right? It's a it's a it's a CD case, a leather bound CD case, and and two CD stacks of, of, of burned DVDs and burned CDs, whether they're show discs, whether they're rough copies that I needed to work on the mixing and mastering, so that was my preview, whether they're final copies, whether they're albums, EPs, mixtapes. I mean, I have like a copy. I had a master copy of everything, right? So like, like going to the store, you had to buy a pack of 10 yep. for $12, okay? So you got a pack of 10 for $12. And you had to make those 10 be the most, I mean, you had to hand them to the right person. I mean, like, were you making I mean, the covers yeah. and maybe yeah, putting a sticker yeah. on the CD, 
right? You know, yes. yeah, doing yes. it all, doing it all. Oh, I remember. Yes. I remember, you know, I, I'll say it on the, on the podcast. I might've dabbled allegedly into pirate CDing, you know, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was really just making <laughs> CDs from our family and friends, you know, yeah, but uh, yeah. you got to realize that the, the artist got to be paid, but yeah, go on. Tell, tell the, Tell the people what it was like burning your own DVDs and CDs. I mean, I was probably the most frustrating thing I've ever done in my musical career because if you made the smallest of mistakes, if you, the smallest of mistakes had, you had to start all over again. Mm. And, and we didn't have like USBs, you know, USB saving where you saved it on the USB. You had to burn everything. So if you were collaborating with somebody else, like that in itself was a hassle because there's a disc to the beat. Then there's a disc for the beat and their verse and the guide. Then there's a disc for the beat and you. Then there's a disc for everything to get. <laughs> like, oh my God, you know what I mean? But hey, you know, we've, we've progressed. We're in the new world. It's actually easier. I love it now. I I find that, you know, now nowadays, dude, I just write so many songs. Like, I don't even bother. Because the mixing and mastering, you learn it after a while, right? And so it becomes so easy. That you just hear it. You just Man. hear it in your ear. It is high quality and very bass driven, man. I was listening to it in my car and I got a pretty good system. It's not, you know, it's a factory system. It's a, in, in the Ford and even the new cars are coming with these pretty good systems. But you were yeah. really pushing the bass on these. And then the lyrics were just, oh, man, you had me going all day long, man. I, I have a driving thing that I do. And I was listening to TWP all day getting ready for this. And, and man, just, yeah. Hey, who's who's making well, let the me beats? Ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Please. What's your, what's your what is the one that stuck out to you the most? What is the one that you you know after listening all day you just go back and you're like you know what that one was just that was incredible. Well, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I, I watch the videos and the Unstoppable video is amazing, but the America one, uh, shoot, it was one that was more Welcome to America. Welcome to America. The video for that one and the lyrics in that one so powerful. Man, you okay, were naming so names. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. I had assistance from um, a guy off of Fiverr who actually does videos. Okay. So, you know, that, that one was a, a made for me. But I take so much freaking pride in Welcome to America because I wrote it. I made the video. I created, I mean, and, and not only that, that's my best. It's got like 40 some odd thousand views on it, man. Like, I am so. If I am ever remembered for anything, I would love for it to be that one. You know what I mean? Because that has the most, it shows the most ability. You know what I mean? As far as being able to effectively show what a rapper is supposed to be like. You know what I mean? Or what a rapper is supposed to be able to do. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. I mean, you're you're not only doing the lyrics, but you're also making the video. It's, it's like a Robert Rodriguez. He does the Spy Kids and... And all these uh, films, yeah. and and at the end yeah. you'll you'll see shot, chopped, and remixed by Robert Rodriguez. It's all you. So are you doing all this in your room? I mean, who's shooting the the other videos? And I I did come across my one. My kids help me. My oh, kids. Okay. My kids. My I did kids. come across yeah, one my... with uh, Jackson, Michigan performance, uh, Chevy sitting. I I have an affinity oh, that, for okay. that one. So that, that's all fan stuff. So like any, if it's got a performance, then yeah. it's usually somebody in the crowd. And they was like, man, that was dope. And I'd be like, do you have a copy of that? Because, I, you know, <laughs> back then I didn't have anybody who would sit and record me. So, I mean, like, I didn't have my own camera. I didn't have my own camera guy. I didn't have anything, right? Well, I'm impressed so, with that one because the DJ is using the same setup uh, light-wise that I am. I have that curtain. And <laughs> it just looked really good. Oh, nice, nice. But continue <laughs> with your story with the kids. Yeah, well, I, I was just going to say, like, uh, my kids, you know, they helped me. They helped me with the videos. and and, and uh you know, like, um, I do all the mixing and the mastering, things like that myself. My kids really help with the videos because I man. suck at videos. <laughs> like, well, that's why you, that's why we have kids so they can help us out, man. I mean, how many yeah, kids do you exactly. have laying around there helping you out, man? I have five. Yeah. You've five. got five kids that are living in your house. Yes. Five kids. All mine. That is super, all mine man. My wife. Oh, that is so good. You know, you, yeah, I guess, uh, uh, fruitful and multiply that that's the, that's one. Yeah. <laughs> that's one that sticks in my head. So. <laughs> but no, that's great, There's man. There's a couple others, but I, you know, I can't say them out loud, right? <laughs> no, you got a little team, man. That's good. I mean, the ages, yeah, I mean, ages you know, ranging from what to what. 
uh, from uh, 16 all the way down to six, man. And, oh. and you know, it, it would just be nice one day to be able to reward them for all their, for everything I've put them through over this. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, you know, one of the biggest upsetting moments right now that I have is that right now, you know, yes, I'm, I'm a popular and I'm on that rise and everything, but you know, you still got those things that you wish to accomplish. You know what I mean? And, and there's just, it's one of the two of the things that are still on my list of trying to accomplish. So man, they are learning from you thank them one day for everything. I, I guarantee they're learning from you. TWP. You're sitting in front of that computer, making those beats, uh, mixing those videos, putting that content out on YouTube showing them that whatever they want to be when they grow up, you're going to back them up, man. I mean, what are the, uh, oh, yeah. do they have any, uh, you could brag on the kids a little bit. You don't have to name the names, but uh, you know, tell me what they're into and, and you know, what do you, wh- I well, mean, we've got, we've got a wide variety here. I, I see one thing, one of the things we're having with five kids is where they come in all shapes and sizes. Don't mm-hmm, they? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 and with that comes different mentalities and behaviors and attitudes and, and they're each all excellent in their own ways and then they each all have their own faults just like every human being does, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say at the best right now, we've got one that is absolutely just killer with like fashion and makeup and things like that. We've got one that's absolutely killer with the art. We've got one that's just absolutely a comedian. She's just, she's going to be a comedian for real. She's just too funny with everything. Mm-hmm. Got another one that is like, I don't know. He's just, he's one of those type of people that no matter what he does, he's just really good at it. Right? Uh, and then we've got another one that has had kind of a rougher start to like with life, with the disabilities and the surgeries and everything is like that. And so we're waiting to see how he turns out once everything's fixed and done and over with for him. Well, you built yourself up a team, man. TWP Productions <laughs> all the way right there. I mean, and now, hey, brag on the lovely wife. Uh, you know, what is she doing? Uh, she is, you know what the most, most amazing thing about her is she's always been the, the rock to anything that I've done. So when I was young and stupid, doing stupid things, she was right there watching my back and making sure I didn't die. <laughs> and then, um, when, when everything kind of started to change over and everything, she, she started to, 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 you know, fit a different role. And, and now we've progressed into being parents. And so now that's what we do. You know, we're, we're parents, we both work from home, and she does her thing, I do mine, you know. She really is just, like, the type of person, DIY projects, you know what I mean? Like, do-it-yourself stuff. She loves, well, she loves to occupy herself with stuff. Well, it sounds like you have uh, a rock, you know man. You have somebody that that has been with you since the beginning and is going to be with yeah, you dude, forever. She'll and ever. Beat the, yeah, she'll definitely beat the crap out of me, if, <laughs> if, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, I guess yeah. you met her in Indiana as well? Uh, yeah. And you know, what the crazy thing about that is, is that, um, so I had this guy that was my friend at the time and I mean, he's still my friend, but we were just not as close as what we used to be. Right. And at the time he was like close enough to be my brother. Hmm. Um, and we had met in Arkansas and we had decided one night and it was actually January 31st or no, December 31st. Hmm. Um, we decided to leave Arkansas and we started walking. Um, and it took us like, uh, 21 and a half days, um, to get, um, from Arkansas to Kokomo, Indiana. <laughs> and then when we got to Kokomo, Indiana, I called my uncle to come pick me up and take me to Lafayette, Indiana. And when we got to Lafayette, Indiana, he was like, yo, um, if you need to make some money, I have a way for you to make some money. So I started selling weed for him. And mm. then I was at this place and I was like, yo, you're really cute. And she's like, yo, what do you think about hair? And then we just kind of started talking from there. And then, you know, it just, kind of turned into this <laughs> okay i mean what do you think about well, we were on legalized our, it we everywhere were on our way, but the thing of it is is that we were on our way to canada and well, she's from canada well let let, right? let let me let me let me pause you what do you think about weed let's get your your political views uh, for a second oh uh, i am all for it all I, am for totally it. I mean like i i if, if anybody knows me they know the one thing i do is i smoke weed so <laughs> like i am all for it i believe in the power of it um, I believe in not only the medicational and the herbal therapies, as well as the psychological and psychosomatic effects of it, but I believe that it is one of those things that may not work for everybody, so to each their own, mm-hmm. right? Um, but there's, you know, there's an aspect of my life in which I am very thankful um, that weed has been there, because if not, I probably would have done a lot worse things. like. 
I, you know, I used to be a really bad addict and I was on a really a lot of different crazy out there drugs. And it was always weed that brought me down when I was too far gone. And it was always weed that got me focused back right on the track when I was strung out and, and, and you know what I'm saying? So like, I believe that if you use it appropriately and if you use it the way it's meant to be used, that it is no different than any other stress relief product out there, such as yoga, such as meditation, such as stretching and exercise or music or anything else. It's just about the way, you know, consumption and, and it's about the, 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 um, how do I want to say it? The, not, you, you can't abuse it, right? You have to be, you know, appropriate with it and use it the right way. So. Now, I'd, I'd it, like man. to get people's views on it because I've never done it before. My mom definitely has. I've smelled it uh, throughout the years. Yeah. I, I'm all for the legalization of it. To, you know, keep it uh, keep it regulated. That way people don't get junky weed. I, I think that's one of the exactly. main problems of it is it's not regulated. If it is regulated, right. then people will get the good stuff and they won't right. hurt themselves, you know? So, exactly. yeah. yeah I, I, and, then, and then, you know, on top of that, man, on top of that, I... I, I I don't mean to be such a, a a dramatic, you know, person, but I do believe in a sense that a lot of these crazy ass crimes that we hear about um, mm. would not be in effect or would not be happening as much um, because, you know, people who might need medication or might need um, some, some, some form of, you know, help, um, you know, maybe maybe a pack of weeds all they need for turning into a psycho killer. You know what I mean by that? Like, yeah, I, I mean, where I'm going? They've just uh, legalized at least a medicinal. Uh, just down the way, there's a, 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 a what is it, the the a place to get your your, your marijuana legally. Uh, you know, so yeah. it, you know, here in the Arkansas, it's, it's been like, uh, yeah, what do they call it? A dispensary. A dispensary. There you go. I, I don't know why that yeah. word just uh, left my head. I'm glad I got a lyricist. <laughs> On the other line, end of the line there. <laughs> All right, <laughs> TWP. So how'd you make your way from Indiana to Canada? Ontario? Yeah, Ontario, yeah. Man, Toronto. I, I, uh, to, Toronto. How did you get yeah. fr- from he- there to there? What was that like? What, uh, what was that journey? A series of unfortunate accidents <laughs> followed by a bunch of dumb decisions that you know left us no other options but leaving everything and everybody like we i was really bad into in the in the gangs and i was really bad into drugs and i was really bad into selling guns and i was really bad into just things that were not appropriate for my family and especially when you have as many kids as i have you just at one point in your life you got to grow up man. you got to say enough's enough right yeah and, i mean were you were you at least making money and staying out of jail or you know was this something that i mean Yes, I it was is walking the wrong a very thing. fine line. Yeah. Let's put it like that. I was walking a very fine line. Um, you know, some days was good money. Some days I owed money. Some days I was no no worries of going to jail. Other days I was literally, and I, I, I kid you not, I literally was one step away from going to jail. So that's it. I want I mean, you to be a cautionary tale for all the the young kitties out there. <laughs> yes, it, 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 it can be very uh, you know tempting to go out there and do the bad thing. Cause you could have big reward, but uh, like Tony Montana in the end, it doesn't work out so well, man. <laughs> Not so well, man. Especially when you got bullets firing at you and, <laughs> and, and your house ends up like Swiss cheese. You know what I mean? Like that's just <laughs> when there's blood all over the floor and you got to explain to the kids, man, that, that, that's a whole different, that's, it's no longer a game. It's no longer just, oh, hey, I'm out here making money. Oh, my God. I almost lost my kid. Ah, TWP had to pack up the, the van and uh, move on out of there. The skedaddle. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And so, so was it straight to Toronto or, or was there any other stuff? Yeah, well, along no, the way? We, okay. So we, we, lived, we lived in Indianapolis. We were living in Indianapolis, and it just kept getting worse and worse. There were so many deaths in our neighborhood. I lost so many of my friends. Um, and then when the drive by happened in my life, um, my son and my, my wife, um, were affected as a result of that. And because of that, they were, there was a lot of, we, we had to wait five months for my son to be in the hospital because he was born five months early. Oh, right? Okay. And it was a really, really bad, horrific situation. So during those five months, we were living off the streets. We were living out of motels. We were living off of whatever we could because 
My house was shot up. It was Swiss cheese. I couldn't go back to it. So, like, we had no family, no home, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I literally walked into the school one day and asked the lady who was the social worker at that place. I was like, look, man, I'm about to walk out of here and I ain't got nothing to feed my kids and I ain't got nowhere to go. I was like, can you please call one of the homeless shelters and let us in? And she's like, I can't do that. But she's like, here's 150 bucks. She's like, go get a motel room and go get your kids fed. Oh. And I was like, that's it. And then my wife called up her family here in Canada. was like, look, we don't know what to do. And they was like, here, come on on. I go, okay, but we'll be there in a minute. Give you a room to stay in, a place to stay for the kids or, you know, help you get set up yeah, or what? Yeah, for a little while. I mean, a little while, but then, you know, we got our own system set up and, and nice. started working. I mean, it was a hassle for the first little while because, you know, legality issues and just new to the country stuff and whatever, whatever. But once that was all fixed, it turned into, uh, it turned into a cool little blessing. I can't lie. Hey, it's good to have family to help you get back on your feet, man. I've had to, I've had to move back home. At a way too old age in my life before, and I'm, I'm, you know, I've I've made it back out, and so I'm I'm glad you did too, man. You, the the yeah. wife, and the five kitties, man, and and things are going pretty good up in Toronto. I have, I must say that I have been blessed both personally and career wise since I've moved to Canada. So I mean, like. It, like I said, though, it took its rocky road to get here, but <laughs> everything's been smoothing out the last couple of years. You know what I mean? So, you know, out of the five years that we've been here, I'd say the last two years have been really good. Really good. Two and a half years have been really good. You Excellent, know what I mean? So, Excellent. And so, I mean, what's on? Uh, I mean, what's uh, OK? What's going on right now with the uh, with the TWP at uh, Twism White Peace? What are you doing right now, these days, now that we're locked in the house? I'm hiding my face in a mask and staying <laughs> in my room, afraid of the world. I mean, like, what else are we supposed to be doing? No, seriously, like, I'm I'm following the rules that are set down, you know, by by the professionals. You know, I don't I don't want to be the reason why, because uh, you know, a couple of my kids they have they have some medical issues. I don't want to be the reason why, you know, uh, something bad happens to my family because I didn't want to take it seriously you know what i mean so i'm um, i'm doing the same quarantine thing that everybody else is doing but i'm still you know making music i just i missed out on a show missed out on two shows already actually they were <laughs> both of them canceled so <laughs> i i feel you dog as being the dj that i am at least thursday friday saturday i'm out on the street yeah. djing usually i do these podcasts monday tuesday wednesday and then i dj right. thursday friday saturday uh, that yeah. hasn't been working out. So there's a whole lot of podcasts in people's ears and I'm glad to be talking. Yeah. Well, see, I've been, I've been soaking into the radio station. So like, <laughs> I, that's like, I completely understand the podcasting cause I've almost been tempted to just start going back to podcasting myself. Just oh, out yeah. of boredom. Oh, yeah. Um, but then I remember, you know, I, I have like, I have podcasters that are on my station. So I just like, you know, what, let me just promote them. Let, let me just promote them. That way I'm not overloading myself with a bunch of extra work that I don't need. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to take the time that a uh, time off that, that I've been forced. To, it's been forced upon me and uh, promote yeah. other people. <laughs> I'm promoting Twism <laughs> white peace, man. And your radio station that you have out there. That's fantastic. Yeah. And, and it's nice with the internet. We could do this from anywhere in the world. <laughs> you got your fat cat radio going on out there uh what kind of music do you yeah. i guess it's all hip-hop on fat cat radio uh you know it's hip-hop r&b jazz new age i mean as long as it's, as long as it has that soul that 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 i don't know you know that sound i don't know because <laughs> i got some pop on there but it, it it's it's that kind of pop that makes you chill and vibe not that kind of pop that you're like oh my god my head hurts you know what i mean so like, I don't know. I like everything. It just, I don't, I don't really play any country. I don't play any rock. <laughs> um, but I don't really get much submissions for that. Right. You know, people find out, Oh, you're a hip hop artist. So like they submit mostly R and B pop, you know, jazz. I've had some jazz. I've had some really crazy people send me some like spoken word stuff and it's like, okay, well, I mean, you know, I'll play it, but if it's not getting responses, I'm not going to keep it, right? You know, that, that's how that goes. Well, I mean, the, so. the way that I've had RadioWhat.com play is whatever I like, I figure somebody else is going to like it. If I don't yeah, like it, exactly. I'm not going to play it. <laughs> you know? So I consider it like my own personal playlist, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, and pretty much that's what it is, man. You know, if, if anybody else listens to it, hey, fine, so be it. Mostly it's out right. there to, to put the link out there, to put the, 
the artist out there, make sure that, you know, it tweets every time it, it plays a, an artist and, and people get to see yep. their stuff on Twitter and they'll go, oh, let me get a retweet. Let me, let me retweet yep. that. You know, uh, yep. somebody's putting, exactly. putting my name out there. Exactly. See, and this, this is, this is the thing nowadays, man. Every, every opportunity is an opportunity to network and market. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like, as long as you can understand that, then you can understand that even the smallest thing as interviewing somebody else has potentials for you. You know what I mean? It's, it's about the way you play the cards. And in radio, one of the greatest things that I've ever been able to do with radio is I've been able to, when I'm needed as the entertainer, I can be the entertainer and I can be the rapper. But then there's those times that I found where a rapper wasn't necessarily the best thing. Maybe somebody, somebody was willing to trade favors with a promoter, or maybe they were willing to trade favors with a radio host, or maybe they were willing to trade sponsorship with you know, a radio station. So I would use my radio station to get me into shows here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And then I would get to perform, but my radio station was the one sponsoring the event. So win-win all the way around. You know what I mean? And, and it was, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to know that as an indie artist, I don't have to rely on a record label or, uh, 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 somebody to book my shows for me or something like that. And a lot of people out there say, Oh, well, you can't do it. You can't do it like that. It's, it's not possible to do it like that. <laughs> so yes, it is. They just it don't just, know, man. It's just stupidly hard, bro. It is. It's stupidly hard. Like I'm sitting here right now and, and I'm going to, I'm going to give you some inside information. It's a little secret. Okay. Okay. Nobody's listening. I am working on a project that will solidify me because I'm already Google verified. I'm already Spotify verified. I'm already such and such and such. But one of the things that I'm not is like Twitter verified, Facebook verified and so on and so forth. So one of the things that I'm working on is a, it, it it's a lot of information to fill out. Um, but once it's filled out, it, it, it allows me to be able to file for these things, even though they're not allowing people to file for them right now. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like circumventing the system in an illegal appropriate way. Right. So Don't tell I'm working on that. this project. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm working on this project. I've got three tabs open. Each of these tabs have to be open in order for me to effectively work on this project. Every time I go to look at the project, I pull up the screen. And I freaking freeze. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so much stuff because you have to do, because you have to code at the same time that you're typing and filling out information. You have to code so that the information appears on their website in the appropriate way. And it's all metadata and stuff like this, right? So, oh my God, like I'm so overwhelmed. And I, <laughs> my daughter keeps doing She's like, you know, you got to get it done, right? You, you know you got to get it done, right? And I'm like, you know what? Why don't you just leave me alone for a minute? No, nope. you really ever had that homework you waited and waited till the last minute to do? Well, this is one of those. <laughs> nope, they will not leave you alone until you get it done, Daddy. Oh, you better exactly. believe it. Exactly. Oh uh, no, I mean, and you're talking about tabs open. All the tabs I have open are TWP right now, man. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. So yeah, I, I mean, bet. I got the official TwismWhitePiece.com website, you know, and and tell the people, I mean, how to how to get a hold of you otherwise and what's on the horizon for you. Are you still making music right now or, or and working on, uh, you know, just working on this, uh, getting verified uh, app, I guess. Well, I mean that, that, that's, you know, that's always in the play. I mean that there's always work behind the scenes that I do every day regardless. And, and, and I uh, getting verified thing. That's just part of it. It's just about, you know, taking the time to do a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Right. The major things though, is, I mean, obviously I just released this amazing, EP with a guy named Furious. Um, it's called Theory of Id. And that's a three track kind of, um, it's a unique twist on what I do. I mean, normally I'm all about love and, and unity and, and being the best that we can be. But, you know, I'm also a real artist. And with that comes, you know, anger and frustration and, and pain and suffering. And, and so it, it's, it was an EP to uh, embrace that in a way. And so we did that. And it came out very, very well. And it was, it's been very well received. I can't even lie. Like it's not even, it just came out. What is today? Monday. Yeah. It just came out today. Actually. I apologize. Just well, came I, out today. I see it right here on Apple music. So obviously it's out there. Yeah, I didn't realize it just came out yeah. today though. Yeah. No, it, I, I think it was today or the fourth. I can't remember. It's either the sixth or the fourth. Um, but it, it's been received very well by people behind the scenes. 
And that's, you know, I, I, I usually judge the success of something by the behind the scenes, not what you see in front, because a lot of what you see in front nowadays is not so much real, which is why people look at me like, bro, why you only got 5,000 streams? Because that's 5,000 real streams. That's not paid for and, and blah, blah, blah. So, like, I know behind the scenes that this, this little EP is actually doing very well. It's very well received. And so, shout out to Furious because the guy delivered beautifully i mean he really brought it and you know when you do collaborations one of the things you always worry about is whether or not the other person is going to be able to match you know match you or at least raise the bar so that you've got to jump for it you know what i mean mm -hmm. and when i first heard him i was like yes i was like i didn't even have to worry about it like from that moment on he nailed it i was just like yes this is perfect so shout out to him we did a great thing on that and of course i'm always i'm already working on another album um, I'm actually embracing some of that darker stuff because it actually worked out well. And I, I find that a lot of people respond to real and even though it's not, you know, love and bouncy and real like that, it's, it's real in a sense that, you know, pain and suffering people can relate to that as well. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's, on that. that, it's not all love and roses, man. Sometimes it's pain and suffering. Right, exactly. That's being, that's the human, exactly. uh, human condition. And one of the things I miss about records, man, is the artwork. Who who did the artwork for Theory of Id? That's beautiful. I did. Oh <laughs> man, the guy's an artist too. All right, party no, people. No, no, it's just, it's just a really good Photoshop and a really good uh, uh, eye picky uh, um, 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 blending and and things like that. <laughs> well, that's the thing you got to be when you're an artist. Now, when I first started, it was just two turntables and a microphone. Now I got to be the 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 Photoshop the the video maker, yeah. the, the, the yeah. content creator, uh, you know, oh, yeah, exactly. it's gotten so big. I mean, I started in 86. It's gotten so big. So, so many things you got to have your hands into, but I do not mind, yeah. man. I like learning things and I, I've learned a lot from you, man. <laughs> Mr. TWP, <laughs> Twism White Beast. I, you know, I had no right. idea what to expect from this, but I know everybody's got a story, man. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, and you, you've come from pain. You've come from hardship. Uh, humble, humble beginnings thrown to the the dogs, really, and uh, and you came out of it. Man. I mean, as much as I, you know, I I try to tell people this, like, because people don't believe. All right, so like, I got, I got, I got, I was in a, I was in a car wreck where the car got hit by a train, what? and so like, I have this scar on my face that's right here by my eye, mm. and there was a a piece of glass in there, and the doctor literally looked at my family and said, look, you know. A fourth of a millimeter one way, he would have been blind. A fourth of a millimeter the other way, he's been dead forever. Oh. Like, I have been in some of the most craziest, outlandish situations. And then when I tell them to people, people are like, yo, that's not real. That didn't happen. And if it wasn't for, like, my wife or my kids or my previous family that have their pictures and, and memories, people would be like, this ain't real. This ain't <laughs> real. And I'm going to tell you something, bro. Pain and suffering, like, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but i want to change that like i want to i want to show people that you don't have to be all right so we've had a previous version of a white rapper and he embraced the pain and the rage and the anger and he glorified it and he made it seem like it was the right thing and it was the appropriate thing and and I'm just trying to be like, you know what man even if you have anger if you have pain you ain't gotta act all crazy you ain't gotta you ain't got to set people on fire. You ain't got to drown them in water. You ain't got to hide no skeleton closets. You know what I mean? I guess I'm trying to show the real version of a white rapper <laughs> rather than the glorified version of an angry white rapper. Because, I mean, white, you know, we all out here. I, I guess, <laughs> let me say it like this. Let me be the most appropriate way to say it, okay? <laughs> I do not feel that the representation brought to you by Eminem in regards to what is considered real rap and real hip hop, meaning emotion based, thought based, and with the idea that you can make the community a better place by using your message to enlighten, uplift, and change the mentality and the aspect of the people that are listening to you. I don't feel he did that. And I still don't feel he does that. And I still feel like he's wasting his legacy by being selfish and only caring about himself while there are millions of people around the world suffering and his name alone, his image, his face, just him showing up to one of these things could make the difference between a child's living or a child dying. And that's all I'm trying to do, man. I'm just trying to become big enough as a rapper that I can use my name 
and my status to help people out in the world because man, what y'all already seen ain't real. And he would get bombed on. Like there's so many people I know that beat the crap out of him because he's fake and he's not real. And he, he left Detroit in the dust. He left his people in the dust. He didn't, he didn't take care of the world around him after the world was there for him. You know what I mean? And so like, if I become big enough and I get big enough at that status, man, believe we're going to be out here changing people's lives. We're going to be feeding people out of soup kitchens. We're going to be building housing. We're going to be making masks. You know what I'm saying? Like, do something with your life. Do something with the legacy. Do something with the, the fame that you created. You know what I mean? So... I man, I, I, I get it. I feel it. I, I've never had the chance to work with Eminem. I think he's done well with his career. I don't know why he left Detroit. Hey. Oh man, he's a goat. He's the greatest. He's like one of the greatest. You know, of may- Lyrically, you cannot mess with him. Maybe Lyrically, he had problems he in Detroit, man. You had problems in Indiana. Maybe you know, there's a reason to get out of town sometimes. You know? I mean, but <laughs> that doesn't mean I wouldn't go back. I'd go back in heartbeat. Right. I mean, the to help clean up the big. city. Yes, in a minute, I make sure yeah. all my people wasn't set, wasn't worried about nothing like that no more. I mean, there's right. just there's an aspect to it. I mean, I respect the fact that he's the greatest of all time as far as white Caucasian hip hop goes. As far as lyricist goes, he's one of the greatest <laughs> of all time. As far as record sales goes, he's one of the greatest <laughs> of all time. As far as it goes, stats wise, he's one of the greatest of all time, and I'm not taken away from that. What I am taken away from is character wise. Mm. What I am taken away from is iconic wise. What I am taking away is that just uh, he's all he is is lyrics. That's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I have ha- I have had the it. pleasure of working with Vanilla Eyes down in Fort Lauderdale. At a, at oh, in, how was that? During his country phase, he's only oh got one God. song, and he'll play it every different way, man. And in this point, he was doing the ass ass baby. <laughs> are you kidding me? oh are it was you, beautiful right oh now? it was beautiful are you serious it was serious you're really serious about this for sure cowboy hat pipe oh my shirt god. it was perfect <laughs> loved it then uh, you know oh my god i was working okay. at a country station well, and he was and he was doing a, a country show at a local club man it was great <laughs> i guess i guess i guess what i just want to be like i just want to be the first caucasian rapper that people are actually proud of that people are actually <laughs> like man did you see what he just did for this kid? Or did you see what he did for that country? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, not be like, damn, man, he just brought out another diss track. He started beef with another person. You get what I'm saying? Like, there's a whole mentality. Like, I have this saying, and, and it's very effective, and it's very true. And when I say this, people are like, wow. If Tupac can be compared to, to, to Eminem, and Eminem can be compared to Tupac, then Swiss and White Peace is B.I.G. Okay. Well, I, I would and hope. You can, yeah, I would hope that now that he's got the means, you know, he he pro- he probably is giving back, man, behind the scenes. And usually, the ones that give back the best are the ones you'll never so, know about. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've done research because a lot of people will be like, "Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. The only things that he does are what we call tax purposes, right? Meaning charity events, okay, uh, uh, donations. Things like that. And we call those tax write-offs. Okay. Mm. However, right now, there are so many different Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, we've got how many different people? I can't. There's so many different people that just came out and dropped millions and millions of dollars. Okay. Mm. On COVID-19 resources, food, the whole nine yards. I did a research, and this was just like two, three days ago, man, because I was really serious about it. I was like, man, I want to know, man. What is he doing, man? He could be really out here changing lives. I Google searched everything and every which way I could, and there is absolutely nothing. There's nothing. And if he is really keeping it that tight to his chest, then I will eat my words. I swear to God, I will eat my words, and I'll apologize. And I'll be like, okay, okay cool. You're doing it, man. My bad. I, <laughs> no, no, you know, I'll shut up from here on out. But in a world where everything is so on the Internet, and we're in a world where you can't hide anything anymore. Mm-hmm. How is it possible that this man's out here helping millions of people with his money and nobody knows it? Well, you heard it you here, what Mar- I mean by this? You heard it here, Marshall uh-huh. Mathers. Twism wants to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give him I a shout. I wrote him a letter, man. I wrote him a letter. I wrote him a letter. I, I did this. I was so serious about this that yeah. I wrote him a letter. It's called Letter to a Rap God. And in that letter, I challenged him. I said, why don't me and you Go serve the homeless right now out of the food bank. 
You grab the spoon and I'll wash the dishes. You feel what I'm saying? I understand. I completely. challenge. You know, and and it's just it's. I mean, I know I'm probably never gonna see nothing from it. You know, that's, you know. That's what it is. We all got high hopes, right? <laughs> hey, man. I mean, I could tell that he's affected you one way or another. Hey, you know, maybe he's driven right. you, driven you in a different direction. That's a beautiful thing, man. So yeah, uh, yeah. yes, it, it is. It's caused me to distinguish myself differently than a bunch of stereotypical other people because everybody wanted to be the next Eminem, right? Right. And all I was like, well, I just don't want to be that. I want to be something else. Mm -hmm. And and it was in that pursuit that, you know, I've done a lot of bad stuff. And and I and and the only way that I could show that I was different is by <laughs> learning from my mistakes and not keep walking the same mistakes, right? Because that's what a lot of these people out here do. A lot of these people get on a track. They talk about, you know, oh, I'm gonna be the next millionaire. I'm the greatest rapper of all time. Or the next set will be like, oh, I'm out here whipping these cars and getting these hoes. Or the next set will be like, man, I'm about to kill everybody while I'm serving this drugs to everybody. I mean. It was always the same typical stuff, right? Mm. And I'd never found, I'd never seen anybody that came out and be cool about love and be cool about being cool with the next person. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be that dude. I'm going to be that dude. I'm going to be the dude that shows you it is okay and it is still cool to be nice, to have manners, to, to not disrespect people, to not disrespect women, okay? To not jeopardize little kids' lives by selling them guns and drugs. Okay. I mean, like, I don't know. There's a better way of life. There's a natural order. And it's when we buck against that natural order that everything goes wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've been down that road. You could learn, they can learn from your mistakes. They, they can't live long exactly. enough to make all those mistakes themselves, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've learned a few lessons from you already. And the kids, I mean, I think they're going to do just fine having you as a daddy. And that's beautiful, man. Said, you know what, man? I, I think I think the biggest problem with their life is me being their father. <laughs> you so, know, yeah, man. Because you know, I'm so quested. I'm so quested. I'm quested on being a rapper. I'm quested on being a better version of me. I'm quested on being the best father, the best husband, the best. And and it's in those moments where you're questing that you forget about the small stuff. You forget about the little things. You forget. You know what I'm saying? So you miss out, right? Because you're and worried like, about it, it means you're going to be the better. You know, maybe you miss a, a day playing catch or teaching them how to ride a bike or something, but they're going to get the big picture. They're going to have all of it, you know, the bigger stuff. Right. You know, so, hey, okay. uh, I'd be remiss I if I didn't that. ask, what is Twism, man? Well, how, how did the etymology of that name come about? Oh, man. Okay. So, you know what? You're going to actually love this because I know, and not, not, to, not to put you out there like that or anything, but you are of age to know what I'm talking about now. Mm -hmm. And so you'll appreciate this. Okay. There was a brand that Shaq brought out called Twism, T-W-I-S-M. And it was clothes, it was shoes, not shoes, it was jackets, clothes, you know, t-shirts. Uh, and it was his personal brand, right? And it stood for The World Is Mine. The World okay? Is Mine. And I was like, I was huge. Shaq is probably, uh, besides Will Smith, Shaq is probably one of the two people that I can effectively remember my entire childhood paying attention to like i was always watching Shaq every time he played basketball he was he's still in my my opinion my favorite and 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 so on and so forth like i would give anything to meet this man in person you know that's that that's that kind of thing you know what i mean fangirl type thing you know what I'm you're, you're gonna laugh but anyway, he's held my microphone before 1994 are you me? i was working in orlando wow. at, the, at the edge and, you know, there's a whole group of kids. Kurt Cobain had just died. And, you know, people oh, are wearing Kurt Cobain that. shirts. And, and this is 1994. And, and uh, I yeah. see this head over the crowd. Me, I have a perch over the top. Uh, it's like a big warehouse. And he comes up yeah, yeah. and he says, hey, man, can I get the mic? Put this track on. You know, I got skills. You know, I got skills. You know, I got skills. I, I had that man. I, I, <laughs> the, the, one of the greatest things of my life. And I, I still have that microphone sitting here in my closet. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. You know, I got so, skills. yeah it's, it's, it's definitely like that. It's definitely like that. Like I would totally put the microwave microphone away for life. I, that's, that's exactly what I would do. <laughs> put it on a mantle somewhere, frame it. You know what I mean? The whole nine yards. But yeah, no. So, I mean, like he had the brand, right? Mm -hmm. And it was called The World Is Mine. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to try to copyright in friends or anything like that. So I started out as Twism MC, okay. um, T-W-I-Z-M. And everybody where I lived at is, is of the urban nature. 
And they were like, what the hell is that? What does that mean? We can't even say. So they would just call me by my street name, which was White Peaks. <laughs> so okay. just, and yeah, I just, I had to put the two together because people who would watch me on stage would know me as Twism, but the people who knew me in my real life know me as White Peaks. So I couldn't be like, yo, Twism's about to have a show. They'd be like, who is that? And I'd be like, okay, White Peaks. But if I said White Peaks to the other group, they'd be like, who the hell is that? And I'd be like, okay, no, Twism. So it was just easier to be like, you know what? I'm Twism White Peace. <laughs> so. I, I get it, man. Keys Dan has followed me from the Florida Keys. And here I am in, I, yeah, in see, Central I, Arkansas. I wanted to ask you that myself. <laughs> I wanted to ask you where the Keys part from. I mean, because I, mean, I, I had a couple of theories of my own, but none of them were, none of them were even close to, to the Florida Keys. <laughs> nope. Nope. I, you know, I, I have a half a million pages out there on my website and, I didn't want to change them. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. I'm old and lazy. <laughs> I understand. But someone God, who's not I old and lazy, understand. it's you. It's you, man. You're working. <laughs> so after we get out of quarantine. I feel old and lazy, though, bro. I feel old and lazy. Well, after we get out of this quarantine, man, where are you going to go? What's, what's the next show? What, what are you planning? What's on the horizon for I, Twiz and White I mean, Peas? If, if, if everything is back to normal by May, which I know it won't be, mm. um, there's, the show's supposed to go back on again. Right. So they, all they did was kind of postpone it by a little bit. But it, I, I know that it's not going to be I mean, the way Toronto is right now. We're in almost we're past the state of emergency. So, I mean, they're getting ready to lock everybody down. So we're, we're at that point now where shows are non-existent. So me being the old man that I am, I'm dusting off the, the what do I do button and going to start streaming live performances out of the basement and I'm going to put up a green screen and I'm going to, I'm going to make it my style, you know, twism white piece flare and, and then all the grand woo that goes with it. But it just a solo performance in my basement streaming. Well, can I, really anybody do now, you know what I mean? So I, I think there's hope for us that China uh, was quarantined. Uh, I think it was January 23rd. And they're just now getting back to work uh, in April, April 6th here, as we are, as we're speaking. And that was on a full quarantine. That was on a full lockdown quarantine, not a social distancing quarantine. That was on a full lockdown. So I don't really see it happening too soon. Mm -hmm. I could definitely say maybe by July, August, maybe. That's what Um, scientists are predicting. I mean, some of them have gone for uh, 18 months, but uh, the the more optimistic ones... Yeah, our Canadian doctors here are predicting eighteen months for Toronto. Yeah, but that's because everybody here won't practice safe distancing. So yeah, I miss hugs. <laughs> 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 All right, TWP. Yeah, it's so crazy now. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. No, no, go, no, ahead. go ahead. It's so crazy now. I, I was gonna say because it's so crazy. We spent the last few years preaching tolerance, inclusivity, unity, <laughs> all this. Now we're telling everybody stay away from each other. You know, don't have nothing to do with each other. It's like, man, <laughs> all the, all in the, in the span of six months, right? You well, I mean? on a totally so, different tangent, we're figuring out who the heroes are, the doctors and the police and the, and the, uh, the firefighters and the, and the nurses and stuff. Uh, all the sports stars, yeah, they're home. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. Aren't they the champs though? I mean, them frontline workers, aren't they the champs? I mean, we really got to take a moment and be like, you know what guys, good job. Cause I mean, yeah. in a world where you got to risk, you know, yourselves and your family just to try to save somebody else who may not even make it or may not even appreciate it if they do make it, you know what I'm saying? Is that's 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 a job I can't do. You, you know what I mean? As it, much man. as I always want to be a doctor and I would love to help and, and, and be smart enough to, to solve this problem, I know that these people who do this on a daily basis are a way stronger character than I am and I gotta give I gotta tip my hat to them because you know, you just, in certain moments of life, you have to recognize where you fail and somebody else shines. You know what I mean? And Man. in this case, boy, are they shining. They're, they're doing great. Yeah. More than All tipping across a hat. the world. Yeah. More than tipping a hat, man. You'll write a song about it. Here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have thought about it, but then I was like, man, everybody else is doing that. Oh, I don't yeah. want to follow what everybody else is doing. You know what I mean? Hey, so, you, your song could be the breakout Corona song. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate the confidence, bro. Let me tell you, you know, got me walking around here like I'm the king, peacocking and everything. <laughs> All right, my man, I, I've taken a, a lot of your time. I, I look forward to to me meeting up with you. You know, if, if either you know as time progresses, 
as you get out of uh, of the quarantine and break out into the world and and do more yeah. man uh, get keep keep in touch with me on the progress but uh, let the people oh, know how, sure. to, how to get a hold of you twp tweezer uh, white piece i mean Everything is Twism White Piece. I mean, you go you go to any platform, you just type in Twism White Piece. If it doesn't come up, then you, you let me know on another platform, and i got to fix that. Because as far as it is right now, you should be able to search me on any platform under Twism White Piece, and it pops up. But for those more specifically, you know, people that like those specifics, I mean, we've got YouTube, that's official Twism, uh, yeah, official Twism WP. we got Instagram, official Twism WP. we got Facebook, that's real TWP. We got Twitter that's Twizzle White Piece. We've got I don't know. Just Google me, I guess. Oh yeah, I you're you're I, well branded, you know, man. I, I googled Twizzle yeah, White like, Piece and everything came up. I got your Facebook, yeah. Twitter, Instagram, fa- your other Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Spotify, your iTunes, and, and your uh, yeah, yeah er- everything's there. And I even have the uh, the link for Diamond Edge Hip Hop Network. Uh, you know your that's Facebook my business, there. right? You know, my business had to have its own personal thing. I couldn't keep every. You know, it was amazing that I went for so many years having everything under just one thing. Right. Back when you know it was just regular. You know, there wasn't all this government. You know, has to do it this way, and these rules apply, and these laws apply. But before all that, man, I was just choosing white piece, and I was just doing my own little podcasting radio station. Now it had to be differential and. Everything had to be split and so on and so forth. So. Oh, yeah. The Internet station used to be Radio Keys, Dan. And, uh, you know, actually, yep. uh, my wife named it. You know, she I said, hey, what should I name uh, my radio station? She, has, she said, what? And so radio what? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. That's actually really cool. That's actually a really uh, it's a lot better than my story. You're, you're going to freak. Man. Go ahead. So I was just a radio host uh-huh. um, and I was a radio host for a radio station called Two Loco Radio. Mm-hmm. and then a guy came and approached me and was like, look, man, you're so amazing. Because I won two awards for being a radio host, right? Excellent. And the guy was like, man, you're so good at being a radio host that we would like you, I- I'd like to start a company with you. I'd like to start a radio station, which was called Fat Cat Radio. 30 days after we started this thing and he we created this contract and everything, he died. <gasps> and I was like, are you kidding me? I now am full ownership of this 100% legal ready to go radio station. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to let this go. This, this must be like one of those tuck away, egg in a basket, save it for a rainy day kind of things. Because I mean, I I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm going to tell you something from the moment I've got it until now, I've never had any problems taking care of it. And that in itself is, that's crazy. Like financial wise, promotion wise, it is, it's always seemed to just fall into place. You know what I mean? So yeah. 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 Totally. (laughs) All right. Well, you're, it sounds like you're heading down the right path, man. I mean, you got, you got the family straight, you got the career heading in the right direction. Uh, and let's see if we can get you some more listens, man. Hey, you have at least one Absolutely. new subscriber, and that's me. Uh, oh, in, in addition that's, to your two, that's what it's all about. Two, two hundred. What is it? Two point seventeen k. Two hundred seventeen thousand people are subscribed to your channel. I think you're putting out enough content. People are. People know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you being on the What Makes You Famous podcast, man. <laughs> Thank I you. mean. I I I, don't, I guess everybody sees me as more of a success than I see myself, right? You know, you know, everybody sitting outside of the thing always sees, you know, better than what you can see inside of it, right? So, I mean, I appreciate the sentiment. I appreciate the compliments. I appreciate the belief and the love and the support. I just am going to say the same thing that every other artist does, man. It really boils down to, to you, the listener, the fans, the supporters, man. If you guys want me to succeed you guys want me to be the success then all it takes is listening sharing retweeting supporting you know what i mean so that's that's ultimately when i hear you when i hear people say it like that i'm like that's that's all it's about right yeah i mean i can sit here and tell i'm blue in the face saying the same thing over on a different track every different way but unless somebody's looking back at me and saying man that's a good job you're doing a good job keep going it's really for nothing right no that's what keeps the artist going is is the the accolades the the coming up yeah. to you after the show to the merch table and saying, man, that really touched me. That, that was a good show. Yep. Thank you. TWP. Yep, exactly. Thank you. Uh, usually I, I finish these things off with the last words for the people. You know, if you've got any, any ideas or 
or anything that pops into your head, words to live by, or just whatever pops into your head right now at this particular moment in time. Uh, Twism White Peace, last words for the people. Remember that in everything that you do and every action, and every decision and every situation and every opportunity, it boils down to one thing, you. Do you have the power? Do you have the willpower? Do you want it bad enough? Or are you just pretending? When people say, you know, I want to change my life. Do you really want to change your life? Or are you just pretending? Because if you really do, then you are going to make that difference. And that's, that's what it comes down to. You know, people need to be understanding that they have everything within themselves to be whatever they want to be. And they don't have to be held down by socioeconomical factors, um, environmental factors, life factors, anybody, anywhere, at any time, even if they need help, can change their life. It just starts with them having the desire to want to change, to want to do better. Well, there you have it, party people. Twism, White Peace, TWP. Find him everywhere using Twism, White Peace. And, hey, check out his radio station, the Fat Cat Radio. It's FCR247.com. Uh, I guess it's FCR Fat Cat Radio 247.com. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Go listen to your hip hop and whatever else is on there. It's got some R&B and jazz and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like that, man. Yeah, give you something to listen to while you're while you're doing your thing, you know, just exercising or washing dishes or hey, working on your car, that kind of thing. And uh, man, he's got his he's got his stuff everywhere. The guy's a lyrical poet. Just in case you didn't know it, <laughs> quoting another white rapper that we were just talking about. Hey, all right, you'll look up those lyrics. I know you will. All right, party people. Thank you so much, Twism White Peace, for being on the program and, and giving a bit of your story, man. You've had some ups and downs, a lot of downs that made you have the ups. Uh, from a pain and suffering comes creativity. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, man. I'm sure I will. Ah, thanks again for being on the program. What makes you famous? All right, that's it for this installment. If you'd like to tell your story, yeah, you. I'm talking to you, my loyal listener. If you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call at 501-470-6386 or email info at radiowhat.com. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, radiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. If you like what you hear, follow What Makes You Famous social media. Use the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Follow on Facebook at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Instagram at What Makes You Famous. Follow on Twitter at makes famous and follow on youtube at keys dan leave what makes you famous podcast to review and subscribe listen to what makes you famous podcast on podbean itunes youtube stitcher google podcast and spotify and almost anywhere you find podcasts tell your story on my podcast what makes you famous Call 501-470-6386 and leave a message to set up a time. You can support What Makes You Famous using the PayPal link, paypal.me forward slash keys dan. Email info at radiowhat.com. What Makes You Famous podcast is a production of Keys Dan Enterprises Incorporated at keysdan.com. Thank you for listening. Radio What, the music you want. With some great, great quotes, practice what you preach. American Proverb. The music you want. RadioWhat.com Hey, Keys Dan. What you doing? My line. I'm playing the best music by request. 24 hours a day. Click on the request tab at the top of RadioWhat.com RadioWhat.com Radio